on with the next SCP. SCP-771 is a form of AI that appears to be constructed out of both organic and mechanical components. The metal components of SCP-771 are a varied origin and composition, with several still unidentified but may appear to be broken or damaged. Its biological components appear to be extremely decayed, appearing to suffer from some form of degenerative disease or virus, with the mechanical opponents acting as a form of life support. Due to this impaired state, SCP-771 cannot function properly and can only function for short periods of time, with many errors and glitches during that time. When SCP-771 undergoes an error or shuts down, a swarm of small robots is released from a hatch within SCP-771. These microbots will swarm over SP-771, then, then start to search the surrounding area. The swarm will break down any and all metal in the area and return it to SP-771, attempting to patch the damaged areas. These patch, patches appear to be temporary and typically only last for three or to four days. The swarm will also target any vertebrate animals during their search upon contact. The swarm will proceed to sting the subject, injecting a fluid that completely freezes all muscles in the body almost instantly. This fluid reacts only to the skeletal muscles and allows all organs, including the brain, to function normally. Once frozen, the microbots will move the subject into close proximity to SV-771 and proceed to cut off portions of tissue. The swarm will bring the tissue back to SP-771, attaching the pieces to the pre-existing biological components. Once the subject dies, the microbots cease their harvesting and retreat back into SP-771. The harvested tissues appear to immediately contract the same degenerative illness as their original tissues and degenerate to an unusable state after 12 hours necessitating the retrieval of additional tissues. All right, an addendum test log, 771-11-0-B. Dr. Redacted, where are you from? SCP-771, FF parentheses fr r rom o o up up out of garbled text. Dr. Redacted, what is your designed purpose? SP-771, several screens of garbled text. Dr. Redacted, I don't understand what is your desired purpose. SP-771, several screens of garbled text. Cont, uh, question mark, question mark, slash, slash, r dot, a, t, t, a, star, at, and, n, Garble text. Dr. Redacted, if we want to help, can you deactivate your defensive robots? SV-771. Star, exponential mark, exponential mark, period, SL, D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D No. It, it, it is needed for continued operations, 81. Dr. Redacted, we can help you. We can repair you and restore full function. SCP-771, LLW, a bunch of exclamation marks. Gerbil text, motives, unimportant. Primary D-99, effective P-A, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, equals out. Dr. Redacted, what is primary directive? SP-771, control. Dr. Redacted, control of what? What are you supposed to control? SP-771, SO-01, S-8, HOM, STAR, W-H-H, several screens of garbled text. Note, at this point, SP-771 shut down and the LCD screen was quickly broken down by the swarm.
and that's the SCP. And I tried my best to read the fucking document. Yeah, that sounded like an absolute snore. I do not envy you there. Also, I tried hard not to say this to the cunt. <laughs> because it was C O N T. C O N T. I tried so hard. <laughs> See you next Tuesday, is now. See you on next Tuesday. See you on next Tuesday. <laughs> So, did it say anything about, like, the mass itself trying to locomote? No, so far it seems to only be stationary. Then I'd say certain groups. Hmm. Yeah. I think it's... But, I mean, it did say yeah. it was in life support, which means it can't really move. Yeah, so... Like the the only people that are going to be affected by this thing are the very very lucky young whippersnappers that are D class and are asked to go take a look at the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, certain group. So everyone's green on. Yeah. Right next to the German party guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that thing. Wait, we put that in certain group. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I thought we put that in reassign. No, we put it in certain group for some reason. Well, I'll, we can look up what the reason was later. I, I, yeah, I. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember because to me, all I remember of that thing is. It's that one robot that the guys made a German party guy for no reason other than apparently liking the German party. And it's able to be defeated by a 20 watt light bulb. Oh. Just shine, just shine a flashlight on it and it shuts down. <laughs> I, I still don't see why that thing's a keter. Why is that thing a keter? <laughs> Why was that ever a keter? Just put it in your office space and it's got and just don't turn the light off. Hatch. And you're Hatch. fine. Hatch. Yeah. You 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 are you, you are thinking that the SCP Foundation would not be completely idiotic with stuff. They're, they're not stupid, right. but they're idiotic. Have you met right? <laughs> <Listen>. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is, this thing isn't dangerous. They can be stupid all they want. Well, I mean, it's dangerous as long as you're in a dark room. But just go go on, just, just, just place it in like an office space. Don't turn off the lights, you're fine. It's so dumb. <laughs> Wait, could you place it with the, like... With the like, uh, what was it called? That nightlight thing. Oh my gosh, the nightlight SCP! Oh no, I don't remember what that was. Remember, it's the SCP where it would make people fall asleep and then have that entity go after them. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's a robot, so I doubt that would affect it. But you could put it with it, and well, actually, I don't think the night light would have enough light to keep it deactivated. Yeah, and plus, we... if, what, what if they start fighting each other? <laughs> like, it summons the entity and the entity and, and the freaking robot fight each other. <laughs> Possibly. That could lead to a containment breach. That'd be fun to watch. <laughs> Who will win? I mean, a night light right. or a robot? No, specifically the robot that's dressed like a fucking asshole party guy. For no reason other than the guys who made it apparently really like those guys. I still don't care. Alright, so we good to go on the next SCP now? <laughs>
that that SCP is re living rent free in my brain, and I fucking hate it. All right, we're, going, we're moving on to the rapid SCP. So, uh, Pika, if you're here, you don't want to stay here long. Is he, uh... No. I think Pika mentioned that they're muting and went off to ah. do something. So they're probably not here, but yeah, still. Content warning for those who are afraid of the spite. That made no goddamn sense. <laughs> Just spite. You're afraid of spite. <laughs> spooters scary to you. Brain no like spooters. Let's go. Anyway. SCP-775 appears to be a form of arachnid and the of the order Exeodidia, more commonly known as the Tick. Wait, the Tick is an arachnid? Yeah, I learned that what? recently too. I always thought it was a bug. I didn't know it was a freaking arachnid. I mean, it's like, oh. If it has eight legs, it's an arachnid. How I didn't even legs know. Do you think it has? I thought it had six. I thought it had six for a while. But... That's actually interesting. I did not know that. Though I'm pretty sure bug is a more gen general term that could refer to pretty much anything small and well, like that. <laughs> really? Wait, yeah. what'd you say? It does not uh, apply to arachnids specifically. Why? It's an entirely different group, apparently. <laughs> So there's a specific bug group, scientifically? <laughs> it's, a it's a specific group that's not a bug, but it's as small as a bug and eats bugs. Well, sometimes spiders are bigger than bugs, but... Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I mean. Like, what's, what's the... Well, did what's you know the... some of the brain of the spider is in its butt and some is in other parts of its body? No, I did not, but that's cool. But the the thing I was gonna say is like does like what's the specific definition of a bug in that case? Because I've heard bug used on six a legs. lot of things. It's just specifically six legs. I think. Uh, it can be more than six legs, less than six legs. So um, it's it's so it, it's it's a bug if it has if it's small. But not spiders, though. Not arachnids. Arachnids don't get to be called bugs. <laughs> but pretty much anything else that is like a small uh, what's the word I'm going for? Has an, a small, has an exoskeleton. Those can be called bugs. Yep. Humans are fucking weird. Anyway, on with the SCP. I mean, not all spiders are small. Some are big enough to eat birds. Yeah, the Goliath bird eater. They actually can get a lot bigger than bugs, which is kind oh. of terrifying. Oh well, yeah, but then, well yeah, but then they 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 could also just be called big bugs. There are large bugs. Oh have yeah. You, have you seen a stag beetle? <laughs> Here's the thing. I remember reading something about Australia getting mad at Americans for trying to take the Goliath bird eater home as a pet. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Uh, why are people? What do you expect from Americans? Why? Do you, why? Why? Why does it seem that you? I don't even want to say humans. Why? Why does it seem that Americans are so prone to want to just cause ex 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 invasive species situations? Like we always cut. It always comes back to this in, in these streams. First, it was the fucking kudzu. Now it's the fucking. <laughs> that, now it's the fucking Goliath bird eaters. What's next? As far huh? as What's I'm, next? as far as I'm aware, when I read what they said, the Goliath bird eater is not allowed outside the border. So it hasn't left the border to America. Well, well legally. Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, but I'm just being frustrated with the fact that why 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 do we keep making the same stupid ass mistake constantly? 
Also, it's illegal for anyone to bring any amphibian to Australia. Human... What? Hatch, because no, human's dumb. Well, yes, but still. And that also makes sense, because cane toad. Yeah. <laughs> they brought the cane toads there, and they are just destructive as fuck. Yeah, anyway, let's get back to the SCPN. <laughs> no, I want to keep being mad at humans for being stupid. Too bad. Alright. Fuck you. It is of a significantly larger size, with most unengorged adults reaching the size comparable with a U.S. nickel. Coloration varies between black, red, yellow, gray, and various shades of each. Adults possess eight legs, while juveniles possess only six. SCP-775 is capable of making small leaps and travels very rapidly along solid surfaces. SCP-775 shares the trait of a flexible body structure, but is much more robust than the common tick, capable of surviving crushing, cutting, and tear or tearing with little to no damage, and capable of flattening out to slide through 0.25 centimeter gaps. SB775 is also capable of swallowing up to four times its original size during feeding, although this does slightly hamper its ability to move. The legs of SP-775 is also very strong and are capable of damaging concrete over time. SP-775 feeds in a manner similar to the common tick, but more extensively. SP-775 injects both an enzyme to increase blood flow and one that begins to liquefy other tissues. This enzyme will attack all tissues except those making up the layers of the skin. SP-775 will then eat the blood and liquefied tissue until it is totally engorged. It will then lay eggs, lay an egg sac containing 20 to 30 new SP-775 on or near the host subject, and then resume feeding. SP-775 will feed on any vertebrate animals, and will continue to feed and reproduce on the host until it is no longer capable of providing nutrients. Young SP-775 will often burrow under the skin in an attempt to feed on liquefied tissues directly. Hosts will eventually be fully hollowed out, with only the outer layers of skin remaining. SP-775 will then fill the skin with eggs, then depart to find a new host. Hosts in advanced stages of infestation are described as taking on a bloated or misshapen form, many times with multiple SV-775 attached to many places on the body. Nest skins are often filled with maximum capacity that the skin is capable of holding. SV-775 is capable of reproducing offspring two days after hatching, with eggs taking 24 to 30 hours to hatch on average. This accelerated life cycle and ability to resist most forms of physical damage cause SV-775 to undergo an almost continuous population explosion. Bleach appears to be effective in controlling SV-775, with most dying after several minutes of being submerged. So, fun fact. The only thing that seems anomalous about these guys is the fact that they're damn near indestructible. Everything else is almost exactly like a lot of other types of ticks, besides the whole defying up the tissue. That's actually how some ticks are. Some ticks are practically indestructible. Fair, yeah. Yeah, true. I've, tr I've tried crushing ticks that weren't engorged. I think that's the big thing. If they're engorged, they're much easier to kill. Which means only the females are easy to get. Yeah. So, so it, it, it get that engorged because they're trying to create babies. Now it looks yeah. like from this uh, article, it says that any instance can lay eggs, which means oh! yeah, it did not specify gender. Any instance can lay eggs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> are, uh, are uh, gen gender queer? Tick stands 
Um, I do not stand by by any kids, gender, queer, or not. <laughs> that is very fair. I'm just memeing. Wait, hold on. I'm changing my name now. Oh, for fuck's sake. Is everyone going to have a name based upon their stream at some point? No. Let's see. On switch shall change to... What, gender queer tick? Yeah. Oh, yep, gender neutral tick. <laughs> so, e either way, um, and I guess the other just freaky thing about this is just how quickly they reproduce. I yeah. think it's still certain groups, but fucking gross and hard to contain. I think Pika's not here. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't see these things managing to take over an entire fucking city, but they're still going to be a hell of a hassle oh, yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Isn't our art? It isn't. Isn't life great? Wait. Isn't it? Isn't How come the foundation form? hasn't tried fire? They haven't. Wait, they haven't tried to light these things on fire. No, the only thing they tried is bleach. Why would they? They just. I feel like fire. <laughs> I feel like fire would be a pretty. Hey, one of the most things against pigs is that they fire. Unless they're the underwater thing. Well, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, let's yeah. Light the, let's let's light, light the water ticks on fire. God, the SCP found it. Like, on one hand, like, damn, you, you got a lot of really smart people doing a lot of really smart things, but other times it's like, mm -hmm. wow. Why is this statue a key? <laughs> <laughs> um, or not statue, this robot. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I mean, it's basically a statue once you shine a fucking 20-watt light bulb on it. <laughs> My mom's yelling at me because I'm being too loud because I'm frustrated about this. <laughs> <laughs> you should explain the statues of them. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely going to explain why I was getting pissed off later. <laughs> uh, my lights are flickering, which means... Which means what? I think we lost Hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized the Durnus name. You did? Yeah, I just realized it. <laughs> the gender... I just realized atomic brain fart, gender neutral tick, and nuke mold. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jury's all that's left. Change. Change your yeah, but the next SCP is a joke SCP. I think I think Hatch's internet crashed. Maybe. Or like power went out. Because he was talking about his lights flickering. Yeah. And he just went offline. And he's out of voice call. So yeah, yeah, their their power probably went out. Damn. Mm. Oh That's yeah, sad. I put <clears throat> I put my quote in quotes. Wait, did you? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure, Jira, I'm not sure if you noticed, but the lullaby version of Dead Space is out. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to, I promise to to do since you're being the points. Thank you. Yeah, I guess we can continue and just fill Hatchet in when he comes back. Right. Anyway. On with the joke, SCP. Wait, did someone, uh, did Hatchet return? No, I, I just said we're, we'll just fill him in when he comes back. Yeah, I, I was just asking because it sounded like someone entered and left. No. Oh, Hatchet. Hey. Yeah, so apparently the SCP Foundation caught on to the fact that I was talking shit, so they fucked over my house's power. <laughs> That's my explanation. <laughs> Still gonna talk a hell of shit because that's fuck. It's yeah. basically a statue, but I'm here. Yeah. All right. Now we can get on joke SCP. Anyway, SCP seven 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 J or Dark Blade, as he chooses to be called, is a white male of about seventeen years old. He has flowing white hair with green highlights and a crystal blue eyes and a that reflects a dark past. He is clad in ebony armor that he made himself. His effect on female personnel, uh, which may not even be supernatural effect, is it, it, uh, it is very powerful. He is described as a smooth pimp. <laughs> it is totally irresistible. <laughs> He has chosen that he created this uh that he created this uh thing. Probably he he wrote it himself, sort of thing. He has chosen Iris as his bride, though to wed when his mission is over. His element is water, which he has full control of, and he has a pet dragon who must be referred to as Set. Blade's power of water, as well as his supernatural skill with the katana, protects him from all harm. When he's attacked in any way, water shields will appear around him and deflect the attack back to the attackers. This just sounds... This just sounds like a weeb. Yeah. A weeb insert. So, apparently he, he has talked to several... Uh, SCP personnel <laughs> and made them sentinels apparently. <laughs> Clef, you are the one whom I have I have been waiting for. Dark Blade, I am. Clef, then I am ready. Dark Blade. Take up your true weapon and tell me your true name. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Clef. Oh my god. I am Death Metal, the son of Satan, wielder of the guitar of weeping souls, half Saiyan heir to Son Goku. Okay, yep, de yep, definitely. Oh my god. Dark Blade, then together let us arise and cleanse the world. Death Metal, by the tears of Mephistopheles, it shall be so. Anyway. I think even I don't know who this person is, but Yorick, you wanted to speak with me, sir. Darkblade, I did. Yorick, what must I do? Darkblade, you are the dark hard, heart, uh, Kuran Nana Nansensu. You are half vampire, half werewolf, and half ninja from the ancient clan. Take up your 
gun Tana and come with me. <laughs> Yurik. Yeah. Yes, my best. <laughs> yep, this is definitely just somebody like putting making a animation. <laughs> anyway. It's just it's just a Keter class. I I want to get through that all is, these though. <laughs> that is a weeb. I want to get through all these though. <laughs> Who makes other people weaves? Researcher yep. crack. Cast it into the fire. Researcher crack. Hello, SCP Sound Seven J. Dark Blade, please call me Dark Blade. Researcher crack. You wanted to see me? Yes. Dark Blade, indeed. You thou only can't say that demon's name on Twitch will become my what? can't say that word on Twitch either. Is that un objectionable? It's a demon that takes vitality from men in a certain oh, way. <laughs> wait, wait, Twitch has a problem with that? I mean, you can show it in games, that's fine. They just don't like the words. <laughs> they just don't like people saying that word. Okay. okay. <laughs> don't question it. What? Why? I don't know. But anyway, we can't. We can't. There are literally, there are literally uh, VTubers on this, on Twitch who are. I know. Who, like, but I think they say it. That. I think they like try to say it differently, or something like that. I don't know. I just know that they, some people have gotten in trouble for saying it. So why? Why? Why is Twitch run? I don't know. By such. Absolute fucking idiots. Anyway. Researcher crack. Yeah. No, of course not. Dark blade. Dad expunged. <laughs> Researcher crack. <laughs> Kinky. <laughs> oh. Now we get on to the, the, the best one, I think. Dr. Bright. Ooh, ooh. Oh. What do I get to be? <laughs> Dark blade. You are my friend. You, I mean, you, my friend, are Bobo. <laughs> my stalwart companion comic relief sidekick. You get to fetch coffee, keep my weapons polished, and generally make the rest of us look awesome by comparison. Oh my god. Dr. Bright, that doesn't <laughs> sound very glamorous. <laughs> Dark Blade, you also I get the weirdest... Jealous of Bright? <laughs> Dark Blade, you also get to wear this cool Viking helmet. Bobo, do you want decaf or regular? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Klein, good morning, SV777 J. Are you okay? Dark Blade, it's, it's Dark Blade. Sorry. Dr. Klein, ah, uh, yes, of course. My apologies. How are you, Dark Blade? Dark Blade, oh just fine, thank you. Dark Doctor Klein, well, that's great. Is there um, is there anything I can do for you? Dark Blade, no, d nothing that I can think of. Although I appreciate your asking, Doctor Klein, I see. I, I will be on the way out then. Goodbye, Dark Blade. Goodbye. That was the most normal one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> A video opens when Dark Blade, deep in meditation, his sword across his knees, Dark Blade sits in blissful peace for several moments before he speaks, apparently to this shadow door. Dark Blade, I know you, you're there, Shion of the Machine. Gears, I'm not ready for this, Lord. Dark Blade, you were built ready, Machine. You just need the right words. Gears. But no, I cannot. It's it is too dark blade. X Y Z Z Y I D D Q D God Quicken. Gears are Dr. Gears drops to his knees, screaming as his mechanical implants tear through his skin, every available surface glistening with gun barrels. Dark Blade Rise, Shion of the Machine, so you may show them. Shion of the Machine. 
you shall bestow the path of, of the destruction upon them. Poor gears. <laughs> Gosh damn. Gears suffer the most. Okay, I, I don't think I should go any longer because this is this is literally just being the same shit over and over and over again. This hurts my brain. Oh. It's just the weeb that has, apparently has a mild reality bidding ability because of Gears situation. Well, the fucking it made other people into weeb. This, this is, is just quite... this is like the emoji SCP. <laughs> All right. Hot take. This is ZK. Why is this ZK? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, it's not ZK. Think, think about it. Think about it. It is a weeb grifter. Like, a weeb that is delusional about reality, that has reality bending capabilities. If this weeb at some point went the way of Aaron Yeager, we are all fucked. But it's not. It, they're but not if that he smart. Is there a way to kill the weeb? Because I just hate them. So I mean, it it didn't specify they were immoral. Honestly, like the things they do specifically because they sound jealous of other people, or they're just upset because they're little bitches. Though I have no doubt in my mind, if th if this was thrown to uh, to most of the Keter class, they would die. <laughs> well, again, reality bender. Hatchet. If this thing was thrown at six eight two, he would die. <laughs> or he could just use reality bending and be immortal, because that's what a weeb would do. That's fair. They would do that. Yeah. Also, like, it ha also like, they have a water. They have they're they get protected by water. Yeah. They have the ability to be protected by water, and they also have other fucking abilities. I I but seriously. I seriously think that at the worst case scenario, this is ZK. Because okay, again, let's, let's compromise. XK. Mm, XK. I I could go. I could settle for XK, but I still think that this guy has the potential to destroy reality. All it I... takes is for him to go the way of Aaron Yeager, and we're all dead. Reality gone. The thing is, Scarlet King. Gone. Oh no, Scarlet King will fucking end him in an instant. You say that, but reality bending. He's invulnerable. Yeah, That's how Scarlet he King, King. Scar the Scarlet King is a reality bender too, if I remember correctly. Well, then yeah. it's a Hatchet. Of the he made Hatchet. Scarlet King made the immortal being of reality his bitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which and he's the king of reality. And in reality benders, I don't think he would be affected by a reality bender. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I think he would because what? he would find this because oh, yeah. he would Wait. find this guy to be so insufferable that he can't take it anymore, and he auto hums. <laughs> oh wait, wait! Oh my god! Wait, hey, hey, right? Yes. What about Laffy? I'm, what about Lassie? What would Lassie more, be? I think Lassie would be a more powerful reality bender. I mean, the thing and is, he, he is smart enough to know that fighting the king would be a bad idea. <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking about against the Taku, not against yeah. the king. Oh no, Laffy would kill him in an instant. You say that. He would just literally appear out of his chest and say, hello. 
<laughs> but if if the if if the otaku wants to be immortal, he is immortal. What can Laffy do? Laffy has killed immortal people. Okay, but how will he manage He's to a defeat reality the otaku? As well. And plus, but how do we know how? But if it's possible to kill immortal people, then how do we know that Mister Otaku won't manage to do it himself? Because he's just that fucking cool, apparently. Hatchet, we get that you have a boner for this SAP, but shut the fuck up. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> what did you just say to me, Bright? Right? I don't, I don't think... Right? I don't think we're in an 18 plus chat. I know, I wasn't thinking at the moment. <laughs> And besides that, I fucking hate this SCP, but I'm also trying to bring it to its logical extent. I, I'm I'm trying to bring logical too. Laffy would still end him. I mean, there's still the theory about him being from the King Kingdom of Ab Abandon, from the Ouroboros cycle, like he managed to escape in time. Okay. And those but were again, the, really the world's best reality benders. But again, reality bending weed. A guy who's disconnected from reality, by definition, having reality bending capabilities. I think that that could fuck over Laffy. What? Laffy is an expert. <laughs> yes, he may be an expert. And this guy is nowhere close to the bending abilities he can do. He may be an expert. Okay. But does so, he have uh, the power of friendship on his side? <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Hatchet! <laughs> Laffy would kill him. <laughs> Wait, you should have had she missed an opportunity. You should have said God in an. You should have said God in anime. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Would Would Laffy get an anime? Oh. <laughs> anyway. I said, I said God and anime. God of you know uh, I mean? Oh yeah, because you have the power of God and anime. The thing um, is, Hatchet. How I know Laffy would would kill him is because I. He has shown to be able to turn off anomalous abilities. He, though he does refuse to fight 682. By an uncertain... Yeah, figure. Yeah. But like, to be honest, like... Hey, shoot. Hi, Pika. Like... So, 682 gets stronger anytime someone fucks with it. So I get why uh, they wouldn't want to fuck with it. Imagine them trying to turn off the 682's anomalous effect, and then it gets strong that much stronger. Yeah. I wouldn't want to fuck with it too. And plus, Laffy is more of a strategic fighter, not just a brutal type of person. Like he actually thinks about before about his victims before he fight gets them. And brute kills them in the most brutal ways. I've 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 become bored of this dumb tangent. Let's just put him at, at XK and be done with this. <laughs> yes. Laffy wins, Dark Blade dies. There we go. End of tangent. Nah, I still I nah. I <laughs> I still think Dark Blade will do some Deus Ex Mox on the third shit and manage it. What? Because because the anime protagonist never dies here. That's how that's how this works. <laughs> I guess. That in the power of anime. <gasps> what? I will never I in the power of anime. I will never agree to that. <laughs> now that I'm actually thinking about it, laughing and them probably wouldn't even fight to begin with. You probably think it would probably be too stupid. And plus, That's... he's right in the Foundation's custody, and he doesn't want to go anywhere near that. Like, also, he doesn't want to fucking, like, 
he doesn't want to. He might just be like, no, this this motherfucker is too like, obnoxious. is too yeah, obnoxious, too annoying. I do not want to like deal <laughs> deal with this motherfucker. I'm, I'm out. Go after people that are bad. No, this, this this person is bad, but not always. Laffy is like borderline on which kind of people he chooses. Hmm. He doesn't really care. <laughs> well, in that case, do you think that it is an advantage on the weeb's part that he's so obnoxious that Laffy will probably ignore him? That way he can continue to do his things in the dark behind the back of Laffy. I, Shut I have hurt really up. bad. <laughs> Shut the fuck up about this fucking SCP already. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're going to go on to the next SCP, and I'm good, Pika. Um, This SCP is one that we do know about, and I've made jokes about in another stream on a game I played. The Crooked Man. Anyway. SCP-783 is a hostile entity currently preying upon the residents of Timby, a royal hamlet in Oxfordshire, England. It is. It has a period of activity lasting roughly 70 days after the fall and winter months, occurring every 12 years. It exclusively attacks those who are alone and indoors after sunset. Buildings have... Housing SCP-783's current target will experience a steadily degradation of their structural integrity. Outwardly, this is visible as faults and breaks of the outer uh, facade, which lead affected structures and angled or crooked appearance. This anomaly extends to any objects which have breached the affected building's exterior, causing immediate and severe deformation. It is invariably fatal to living subjects. To date, personnel have yet to prevent an attack, attack or been able to provide any means of assistance to SP-783's targets due to this, as well as SP-783's effects on recording equipment. Little is known regarding SP-783's exact appearance and the nature of its anomalous abilities. Victims of SP-783 attack exhibit gross deformations in their body structure as a result of dozens of compound fractures along their long bones and severely displaced vertebrae. These are healed via the rapid generation of excessive cartilage and acetous tissue. Victims display hyperelasticity of their epidermis and musculature to a Accommodate the extra tissue with one subject's forearm extending over 2.4 meters and another having a recorded height of 12.5 meters. The end result of this malformation and elongation are subjects who visually present as being wholly serrated or gnarled. Despite the nature of these injuries, most victims are alive after the C section, I mean, uh, session. Cessation? It's. I'm not even sure. It, uh, cessation? Cessation, yeah, most likely. It is. It is to cease. Ah. Uh, of an SCP 783 attack, though they often suffer full body paralysis or remain in a persistent vegetative state. 27 living specimens have been acquired and placed on life support. They are held in a wing of, a, of the local hospital. Uh, requisitioned for the foundation use. Residents of Timby are aware of the existence of SB-783, though speaking of, of it publicly is considered taboo. Researchers have documented a playground song shared among local youths regarding the anomaly. There lived a crooked man who made a crooked deal. He kept a crooked cane, and his catch is a crooked creel. He stole a crooked child who, who cried a crooked squeal, and that crooked little man 
was broken on the wheel. And that's the SCP. Pretty easy, certain groups. Considering the fact that it literally only affects one town. But as I said in stream, in stream chat, no committing arson, Pika. Why, though? Also, there's another... Because di- arson bad. Also, there is a dimension in this with this SCP where they found out where it lives, but they have yet to find it. It's like a, it's a mountain of corpses that let if you go down it, and you'll eventually go on the other side to the other dimension to where it lives, and everything's crooked, huh. and no one's come back from it. Ever. Pika. Arson is bad. Or should we see like city? Like it's only in that one town. I'm not sure how big the town is. How many people live in Timby. Uh, yeah, but that's a very certain group. A particular group. Right. Is everyone else in agreement? Considering the fact that everyone else is either bickering with the bickering with the mouse or taking a waz, I'm guessing so. All right. Makes sense. I mean, it. I did say it was a popular one. What are you doing? What do you mean? It just looks like you're using your mouse to caress the XK class title. Oh, I was making. Because the certain group got bigger, uh, I had to change um, it in stream, and not stream, uh, on stream, so that you can actually see all the classes. Oh, uh, gotcha, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, on, on my end, it just looks like you were awkwardly caressing it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, right. P- Pika? Pika. That's the naturalistic fallacy. Go to your room. Pika's not allowed to do the fallacies here. Yep. The next SCP is a little sh- is shorter than the other one and apparently affects restaurants. So let's get into it. Is it COVID? Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, but anyone not washing their hands in the SCP Foundation, Dr. Bright is allowed to do anything they want to them. Wait, seriously? Yeah, that's in the Dr. Bright rules. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh, I forgot to wash my hands after using the bathroom, Dr. Bright. Give me your kidneys. <laughs> Give me your kidneys. <laughs> anyway okay we can't control the mouse want to get ash in here <laughs> anyway scp-785 comprises any restaurant with a name containing the phrase uncle redacted the restaurant name is designated sp-785-1 the actual restaurant is designated SP-785-2. Propagation of SP-785's effects will begin if SP-785-1 is mentioned during conversation in a large public area, such as a movie theater or sports arena. Within one to six months after this occurs, an individual who has been present at the location where initial seating was performed will establish an instance of SP-785-2 it will be located within half a kilometer of the location where SP-785-1 was first mentioned. 
the pers personal and the personal preference and ethnicity of this founder influences the resulting instance of SP seventy five dash two, allowing for the for a wide range of possible restaurants. Following initial seeding, a separate founder will not create a new, a new instance of S75-2 unless all previous existing and publicly known instances have been shut down. Left unchecked, the popularity of SP75-2 will grow unusually quickly. The foundation has never observed served fewer than 14 new instances within 9 months. The spread of SB75-2 is not limited to its home city. When first discovered, redacted instances of 75-2 were found in three separate cities. The effects of SB75 will manifest annually on the first Friday of May, when SB75-2 will advertise a spring special. All customers and employees of any existing instances of SB75-2 will be affected. Starting between 1600 and 1830 hours, any customers who have previously consumed any of SB 75-2's beef or bread during that particular day, vaccinated group A will report to, to SB 75-2. Customers physically unable to report are exempt from SB 75-2's effects. Staff will proceed to stab the members of group A 12 times always using a bronze tip spear coated with that expunged. After all, after all members of Group A have expired, group employees will place their bodies on the floor and they will then turn off all appliances and produce six polyvinyl chloride ba basins of water. All customers still living, destiny Group B, will be issued a large knife, which is invariably invariably composed of a bronze and redacted compound. Using only their knives in their hands, all members of Group B will begin to consume the bodies of Group A every 30 minutes. They will wash their hands using the PVC basins. The meal will last 3 or 4 hours until all the basins have been used. Group B will turn to their homes after the meal is finished. Employees will burn the remains of Group A with the same that expunged mixture used previously. After the completion of all activity, members of Group B will behave normally. Most members have a somewhat inaccurate recollection of the evening's events. Customer reviews of SB 785 2 have typically skyrocketed after this event. Addendum 75 A Despite the Foundation's best efforts to remove SB75-1 from public knowledge, instances of SB75-2 continue to arise. It appears to be impossible to apprehend all civilians who unwittingly spread SB75-1. Furthermore, the possibility of a deliberate third-party propagation of SB75-1 cannot be eliminated. That's the SCP. I apologize. I was more focused on telling Chew Arson is bad and writing down potential uh, sign offs, but I did not hear much other than bronze tip spears. Oh. I am very useful. <laughs> Basically, there's an event that happens. I didn't, I didn't hear much other than skyrocketed. Did shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Skyrocket. And the Sky first Skyrocket. Friday of May every year, there will be an event where there will be two groups of people at this at a at a restaurant of this SCP. Group A, if they ate the bread or beef, they will report to the employees. And then get fucked up by spears. Yeah, get fucked up by spears. And then they'll get, uh, what's it called? Polyvinyl chloride, basins of water, the employees will. And then group B will, con will, get, will be given bronze and or redacted compound knife. And start eating the group A. Every 30 minutes. Mm. And, Cannibalism. And... 
eventually what they'll go home after meals is finished and most of them will then they will have no recollection of pretty much what happened they'll always be inaccurate recollection or collection or whatever all right and the foundation no matter how hard they try they cannot spread uh, stop the instances from spreading or stop people from going in there. So I would say certain group because while obviously it's dangerous and a problem and cannibalism is bad. Yeah. Uh it it's it's just specifically eating at a restaurant. It's the same level of danger of Going to a really sick, really bad restaurant. Oh, gotcha. Fuck you, Adana. What? Hey, they use a scare bright alert. Yeah. Anyway, you're saying hatchet. Uh. It was about the restaurant and danger. It's 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 about as dangerous as uh going to a really like greasy, poorly maintained restaurant. Yeah. That's about the danger of it. It only happens like one day of the year that they actually go like, you know what? Let's do cannibalism. <laughs> you, know, you know what? Everyone who had beef and bread in our restaurant, you're getting eaten. <laughs> Everyone else gets to eat you. <laughs> a, a, a catering service brought to you by Dr. Bright. <laughs> Cat, please. I don't need you here. I just accidentally threw an explosive at my uh, shopkeeper friend, and he's fine with that. Alright. So the next SCP it, uh, its nickname is World Without Man. What? Also, Bright used the war word? What? What? Oh, I used Owo oh, instead of Ubu. <laughs> I did it because it's oh. annoying Pika. <laughs> anyway. Oh, whoa, no. <laughs> that just hurt me physically to say. <laughs> Pika's upset. Don't worry, Pika. I, you don't have to get revenge on me. That already hurt. That, al that hurt me enough just to say. It would be the same if I tried to do it with Blue Wood, though. Anyway. SCP-804 is the remains of an art installation titled World Without Man, revealed on Redacted by the defunct artist group Un element param param master my master. According to the documentation retrieved and deleted from Artis's website during cleanup procedure, SP eight oh four was originally a large clear globe of the earth with several smaller globes and video equipment with within. Promotional material on the website implied that the globe was to display images of pastoral wilderness untouched by mankind, ca contrasted with visuals of abandoned human industry and decaying landmarks. Upon activation before a small audience of prominent environmental activists and artists from the nearby community of Redacted, SP-804 began to display its destructive properties. We can only speculate if the device's 
Fleiss's output was intentional or not, as those involved in its construction perished during the incident or have gone into hiding. While the globes within SP-804 rotate, all man-made artifacts within approximately 100 meters begin to rapidly deteriorate until completely disintegrated. The effect applies to anything ranging from machinery to buildings, clothing, plastic, synthetic chemical compounds, and any tool more complex than a sharpened stick of wood. The area of effect grows the longer the device is active, with the effect grow growing even stronger at its source. Human tissue is also affected at a slower rate of decay, causing victims to become emancipated, I mean, emaciated as they lose body mass, leading to the collapse of the skeleton and death. With the body swiftly breaking down in, into component matter shortly thereafter. Non-human life is completely unaffected. Persons who escape the area of effect experience symptoms similar to prolonged starvation, but can return to full health with proper care. If not for the fact that is that is not entirely immune to its own effect, SCP-804 would have ha had the potential to remove all trace of humanity from the globe in a matter of weeks. Judging from the observed rate of destruction upon original activation versus its current capabilities under testing, SP-804's capabilities have been impaired by the damage it caused it to itself. However, sustained use still prevents an extreme threat, especially if the device is somehow refined or repaired. Due to the circumstances in which SP-804 was secured, it is strongly believed that the device also possesses some form of mental compulsion to those who view it, but testing is still going on to determine if that property has also been compromised by the decay of SB-804 and how it might be contained. This was probably one of the very first SCPs I uh, looked into. Yeah. Like, I think it went a uh, statue, old man, world without man, for me. In terms of like the SCPs that I became aware of, but uh, right. yeah, that's the, I I think it's, I mean, it pretty much said exactly where it should probably go. XK. Yeah. Just some 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 industrious person walk up to it, refine it somehow, boom, more humanity. All that's left is the environment with all the invasive species we put there. Yep. Wait, what what would happen if someone like Dr. Bright went up there? Would the medallion actually be destroyed or would Bright die? Yeah, would it actually kill Bright, or would it just do nothing? That's an interesting question. One that I imagine will never be answered. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Bright doesn't want to go there like, Oh, yay! Yay! I can finally go mess with this thing. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> the medallion just fucking shatters. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure O5 doesn't want him going there anyway, since he is an asset. Yeah. Also, I still find it funny how Dr. Bright is a site director for both Site-19 and Site-17, which house the most dangerous junior class SCPs. <laughs> Why? Who... Who thought that was a good idea? I want to sit down and talk to them. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize this. But, um, this is SP-808-J, which we know is a joke SCP. Its object class is guitar. It's a pirate SCP. Oh, for 
fuck's sake. <laughs> I already hate it. <laughs> it's contained with Davy Jones containment locker. What the fuck? <laughs> Hey, Chew. Just so you know, if you don't put out the fire, I will never refer to you as anything other than Cho Wo from now on. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, on with the description. SCP 808 J is a treasure long lost from the knowledge of your everyday landlubber. Only legends tell of its, of its existence. A vast fortune hidden away by great sight Captain Blue many years ago. It's said that he who finds the treasure may be the richest man to sail the seven seas. <laughs> Addendum 808-J-1 Audio Log 808-1 Interviewed Sight Captain Redbeard Interviewer <laughs> Polly. <laughs> Forward. Site Captain Redbeard inf informed his dearest friend of his voyage into the sea surrounding, surrounding Blue Isles. Blue's Isles. Begin log. Gosh, damn. I can't believe I have to read this part. Anyway. Q. Squawk. A. R. Q. Squawk. A. R. Skip of, of several of minutes. Wait, wait, wait. What did I get? come back to briefly? A pirate SCP. <laughs> that's a joke. Anyway. Okay. A-R-Q squawk. A-R-Q. Polly want a cracker. <laughs> a, I, it was the most brutal voyage I've ever set out upon. Q. Polly want a cracker. <laughs> Hey, me own crew was apprehensive as we sailed into the fog surrounding the island. You could tell Old Blue's ghost was hunting the, those shores. Q, hunting those shores, squawk. Gosh, hey, I was shriveling in me timbers as we finally navigated the rocks and boarded on into the island. The air was thick with devilry, and I looked back to see me, Jolly Roger, disappearing into the mist. Q. Into the mist. Squawk. A. Aye, bucko. I was scared. Me first mate was spotting for me, of course. He told me not... He told me how not even he could see three feet from his face through the damnable fog. And we all grabbed onto each other's hooks and went in single file into the dense jungle of the island. Cute squawk. A. Yes, Polly, me beauty. We passed by those trees in the swift creek until we finally came to the axe. Then we all dug until we hit something. Cute squawk. Polly want a cracker? A. No, Polly, it wasn't O oh, eight or even gold doubloons. It was caskets of the devil's liquid and yon data expunged. <laughs> Q devil's liquid. A I bottles and bottles of rum. Q squawk and log. Closing statement. R. And that's the end of the SCP. <laughs> Closing statement. <laughs> I can't know. <laughs> what is okay. this? What is this? It, I'm I'll starting be right to... back to me and put up when I get uh, stuff. Okay. Gotcha. So, uh, this is Spood Tier. <laughs> you sure? I, I, 
I, I'm fairly confident it's not a danger anyone, but it sure as hell doesn't deserve to be treated like a danger. Just, just a pirate guy. <laughs> as well, as well as treasure that prob that's just alcohol. Yep, it's just drunk, drunk pirate guy. Boy, that's resigned. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not Keter class; it's Kitar. Uh, <laughs> that still hurts. <laughs> anyway. anyway, so how many more do you want to read? Well, I can, I can either do one or two more. Mm, I'd be down for maybe one more. Just one I more. Have to go. Yeah. Well, I could probably make two. It's just. I need to do something to help my mom. It might uh, be better if I do it sooner, but also not that big of a deal. So, well, wow. Well, I'm not sure if you know what this is, Hatchet, but this SCP has connection to the Church of the Broken God. Ooh. It's probably one of my favorite groups of interest. Hmm. Yeah. All right. SCP-813 is a spherical glass sculpture. Evidence suggests that the sculpture was originally 45 centimeters in diameter. However, the effect, uh, however, the artifact is currently missing approximately 17% of its initial mass. Close inspection of SCP-813 has revealed a microscopic system of seemingly metallic clockwork machinery. This machinery is continuously active though the means by which it accumulates or generates power is unclear. The properties of the artifact have prevented more extensive inspection of the machinery, and spectroscopic analysis has proven inconclusive. The glass comprising SP-813 is exceptionally fragile and will shatter upon pressure far below what would be expected. SP-813 always fractures into fragments, fragments approximately 7 millimeters by 2 millimeters in size. These pieces cannot be broken down further by any means, rendering them presently indestructible. Upon shattering all fragments, produce or seek out the nearest human targets. SP-813-1 are capable of propelling themselves through unknown means, allowing them to leap at velocities up to 130 one kilometers per hour. Upon reaching its target, SP-813-1 will invade the subject's eye and embed itself into the optic nerve. Was that pause there because... <laughs> no, bright! <laughs> Regardless of the fragment's input bright. velocity... You're, you're the... Back up, back up. You're the streamer. You shouldn't be condoning crime. <laughs> anyway. Uh -huh. This is a threat to your well-being. Anyway. <laughs> final, final. Sorry, sorry. Final word. Chu, you can go ahead and do it. Just know that I will continue calling you Chowo if you do. Okay, go ahead. Anyway. Regardless of the fragments and impact, and know that, and know that you will get water bombs. All right. Anyway, regardless of the fragments impact velocity, there will be no substantial damage to the eye or the rest of the body. Subject will suffer sharp pain and temporarily blindness, which will dissipate within a few seconds. Following this, SP eight one three one will extend several microscopic wires of an unidentical substance into the subject's brain. These effects produce no neurological or cognitive damage and are universally unnoticed by the subject. The host of SP SCP-813-1 will begin to display marked changes in behavior roughly two weeks after exposure. At this time, the subject will frequently cease their normal activity and stare motionless motionlessly for several hours. These events cause the subject 
pupils to dilate and then in close proximity report subjective uh, ten tinnitus uh, yeah described as an electric hume hum i don't know why i said hume hum during this period the subject is totally unresponsive to towards attempts to rouse them and they will also deny that such periods ever take place over the next three to four months these periods increase in length until they entirely comprise the subject's daily routine and they will only deviate from this behavior for necessary nutrition and rest sp813-1 will remain in the optic nerve until the subject's death at this point sp813-1 will, will withdraw its wires from the central nervous system and eject itself from the optic nerve towards the nearest human target and repeat, repeat the process. Forcible removal of this fragment is fatal to the host and the fragment will immediately seek out a new host in its, in, in its usual manner. Hmm. Yeah. Not sure if you heard this, Aderna and Jerry, if you're still here. Um, it's related to the church, the broken god. Wow, Pika's mm -hmm. here too. Pika is attempting to do crimes, and you enable her. Since this is your favorite uh, group of interest, what do you think about their item? <laughs> I mean, in terms of its threat level, unless I miss something, it doesn't sound to be the most dangerous. Like, obviously, it's it's a threat, but it's not like... It's, it's limited to how fast it's going to spread. Yeah. So that's the only thing I'm thinking about. Uh, as far as, like, creativity, I mean, yeah, that's pretty pretty neat. Pretty neat SCP. Currently fighting a boss, so my brain is not all here. <laughs> Currently getting shot in the gut with a shotgun. Please send aid. Maybe. So yeah, I would say certain groups. Certain groups? Because... Uh, I, I think... guess. Oh, sorry, I didn't cut you off. I, I, I guess I'm just somewhat confused why it would be Keter, considering like, like, it 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 sounds like all you would really have to do to render it inert is lock it in a, lock, lock just lock it in a big box, literally. Yeah. Unless, like, those tiny pieces of glass can, like, get out of the lead, lead wall. I, I don't see how it's that hard to contain. Yeah. Maybe there's something in the addendums I don't know about, but either way, I, I'd say certain groups. You know, well, I don't think there was. Apparently, it was retrieved from an armed, armed convoy from the Church of the Broken God. And none of the members survived the incident. Oh, there was a little message that came with the device. An eye sees all things except itself. For that, it must have another. That which was paired and now separated must be made whole once again. Through its shards the broken eye sees. Through heathen minds the broken god seeks. Hmm. So yeah, probably just so cool. Yeah. And that was the S final SCP of the night. No, I thought you were gonna do two or did you decide against that? Yeah, I decided against it's a certain group. There we go. Okay.